Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we built out the home screen uh, composable here. We see on the emulator we are fetching a list of characters, albeit the first page of all of the 800 something characters that are available, but we are uh, displaying them in a little bit of a grid here. So today we're gonna go ahead, beef this out, get a little bit of pagination going in Compose. Smash that like button as we get started. Subscribe if you are brand new. The only thing I did off screen here is just move this out into its own file. Uh, two things though. One, yes, we're going to get the um, the pages you know loading on their own, but we're also going to hook up the click here so that we get a little bit more of some functionality in the app here. So if we bounce over to our main activity where we have our home screen, we have this lambda here to navigate when a character is selected. This integer that we are getting back here is the character ID that was selected from the home screen. So similarly to a previous, uh, a different screen than we already have, we can go ahead and up update one of these uh, routes here. Uh, one of these routes here, the character details route to also accept a character ID just like this. So we're just gonna go ahead, paste in the character ID. We have the character ID as an argument. Uh, and then we are also going to fetch that character ID here. If you missed it, this is all in a previous episode uh, that we had done on the channel here for this series. So I'll link a card in the top right uh, so you can go ahead and take a look at it here. But we're basically just allowing uh, ourselves to communicate from one composable to another via this nav host here uh, and just kind of navigate from one page to one screen to the other here. So we're going to have the character details screen be fueled by the character ID that we fetched from the arguments. We've now told this particular details composable that we have a character ID as a um, parameter that we can pass in. And then we're just going to navigate quite simply here by doing basically the exact same thing as we're doing here, except instead of the character episodes, we are going to the character details page, just like that. And then we'll take the character ID and paste it in there. Rerunning here should allow us to bounce from this composable, the home screen, to the character details screen. Again, another one built out on a different um, uh, episode here. But we click on the Rick Sanchez, we see that we can kind of go ahead and uh, go to this other page here. We've already built out this other one that we can navigate to the uh, season view and all that kind of stuff. So now we have a couple of these screens coming back together and all is well here. So a little bit of navigation at first. Now we're going to uh, smash that like button, subscribe if you are brand new, and we're gonna actually get into the pagination side of things. If we flip over to our documentation real quick, we see here that the uh, pagination section on this uh, documentation here, we will receive up to 20 documents per page, 20 elements. In this case, we're fetching characters here. Um, so if we could see here, we have 826 characters. We're obviously not loading them all at once. Instead, we're loading them in chunks of 20 for a handful of different reasons. Uh, and basically the concept is as the user scrolls towards the bottom of the screen, they should then fetch the uh, additional page automatically for them. So they can kind of just simulate an infinite scroll kind of thing. Uh, so how can we actually do that? Well, there are a handful of different ways. One of them is actually implementing a particular library, a pagination library. Another one that's kind of a nifty implementation, but I'm not a super big fan of it, is at the end of your lazy vertical grid or your lazy column, whatever the case is, right? You have your content in here and you have all your, your items here, right? You could just do something at this point like launch another you know, coroutine or tell your view model to fetch the additional page or whatever the case is after you've loaded in all of the items. It's simple, it gets the job done, it's not the end of the world, but I think there's a little bit fancier approach here that we can go ahead and use to accomplish the same thing. So I'm gonna create a variable here. It's going to be, uh, let's say fetch next page. It's going to be a Boolean. It's going to be a derived state of, but we're going to have to do uh, something like this. We have our remember block and inside of it we have our derived state of. And that's because we're going to be calculating a few different things in here basically when the user gets towards the bottom of the list. So first things first, in order to actually display anything, we know that the home screen view state has to be of type grid display at the moment and in there it's going to have a list of characters that we're displaying. So what we want to do here is we want to fetch the current character count and we can do that by saying our view state as this here, the grid displaying. 
and then we can go ahead and list our character or fetch our characters and then we can ask for the size of that. The IDE is freaking out a little bit here but basically we want to get the the size of the character list, we want to know how many characters we have, then we're going to detect how far along we are in the actual list to understand, hey, are we anywhere near the bottom? But in order to do that, we're going to have to get something else. We're going to have to get the scroll state, and we will set this equal to the remember lazy grid state. We will simply take this scroll state and we will attach it to our uh, lazy vertical. It's just called state. So we're going to go ahead and set the state equal to the scroll state. And then from this scroll state, we can actually get the, uh, let's go with the last displayed index. This is going to be our scroll state dot layout info, visible items info, last or null. And then we can fetch the index from that. That is obviously a nullable operation. So then we're going to return false in that case. So the concept here is that we have and the IDE is freaking out, I know, I'm sorry. But uh, we have the current character count, we have the last displayed index, and so we can return from here, last displayed index is greater than or equal to the current character count minus, let's just say 10. Right, so what this is doing here is that this will return true when the index that we're displaying is greater than or equal to the last 10 elements. So what that means is the user has scrolled this screen enough that the last element that we can see here, so let's say the alien Morty, is within the last 10 elements of the entire list. And when that is true, we will then, uh, you know, this fetch next page boolean will be set to true. And at that point, we're going to actually fetch the next page so that by the time they get to the bottom of the list, that network call has already happened. Hopefully, it's already come back. We will append those elements to the list, and the user can just continue scrolling. So basically, whenever they get within 10 elements of the bottom of the list, we're going to fetch the next page for them under the hood. So we are going to use the fetch next page as our, um, our key in the launched effect. And then simply here, we're going to say if fetch next page, then we can tell our view model to fetch the next page. We're going to go ahead and just implement our fetch next page uh, implementation here. But one thing that we need to kind of hold on to is, uh, sorry, I guess the view state's over here. We just have a list of characters at the moment in our view state, which is fine. We can, you know, improve this later on, uh, but it's very difficult for us to know what page we're on just based upon the size and, and the list of characters by themselves, right? So the view model is going to get a little bit more intelligent. It's going to have fetched character pages list here. It's going to be a mutable list of just the overall pages themselves. Right. And so then this will allow us to kind of do, um, you know, maintain a little bit more logic, a little bit more state under the hood uh, so that we can kind of implement this fetch next page more simply. So first thing we're going to have to do is when we have a successful uh, first initial fetch, we're going to have to go ahead and say the fetch character pages. Why don't we clear it out? And then we say fetch character pages dot add um, the character page. Right, so this is kind of just internal stuff that we're holding on to. Then we emit to our view state the list of characters that we want to display. In a future episode, I'm going to go ahead and kind of mold these all into the same because now we're holding on to two different pieces of state for different reasons. But we can actually kind of fold these into one more intelligent state for both cases, right? Making network calls and displaying whatever we need to display on screen. So the reason this uh, fetch character pages list is helpful is because now we know the next page index is going to be the fetched character pages dot size plus one, right? When this has one page in it, it's going to be size one plus one is page two. When it has 10 pages in it, 10 plus one is 11. We will know which page we actually need to fetch because the way this whole thing works is we're fetching pages by uh, index here. So we're going to go ahead and say view model scope dot launch. And then we can go ahead, do something very similar to the above character repository, fetch character page. Our page is going to be the next page index. Then we're going to handle the on success case, the on failure case, we're going to leave for another day. But in the on success, we have uh, a few things that we need to do, right? We need to one, update the character pages, we will add in, so we'll add that character page to our list, of course. And then we're going to have to do something kind of similar here, except we're not going to just 
emit exactly this, right? Because this would override the entire list uh, for display with just the characters that we got back from that one page. So instead, we basically want to append the characters that we just got back. So we're going to go ahead and say val current characters is going to be equal to, let's rename this, we'll say current state. We're going to use the current state, and we're going to cast it as our uh, grid display. We're then going to take our characters, and in the event that is null, we are just gonna say empty list. It definitely should not be, but you know, if it is, because then we're simply going to say characters is going to be the current characters plus the characters that we got back from that page, right? So now instead of just 20 characters at first, we're gonna then add 20 more, so we'll have 40, and then we'll go to 60, etc. So now we have a fetch next page operation happening, we have our derived state of working, and I think that's actually about it. Let's go ahead and rerun it. Let's see where we're at. All right, coming back to life here, we see that we are loading that first page in. And then I don't remember exactly what that last character was. Oh yeah, it was somewhere around here. Ants and my eyes, Johnson, Aqua Morty. Uh, we never saw that big head before. And we'll see here that now we're kind of accomplishing that uh, infinite scroll here that we're all used to as if you're on, you know, a social media app or something along those lines, right? If we do fling forward, we can get to the bottom of the list and then the next page loads in. So you can beat the network request, but uh, we're definitely loading in a lot more pages, a lot more content than we had before. And we're not necessarily loading all of it at once. So this is helpful for a handful of reasons, load on the server, you know, network information, uh, network package size over the, over the network and stuff like that. So you're not downloading a gigabyte of data at a time, you know, that kind of stuff. So if you made it this far in the video, please smash that like button. Let me know how I'm doing down in the comments below. Subscribe if you are brand new. There's one more thing though that I've noticed in a little bit of testing here is if we go ahead and select Brad, who is seemingly not like at the top of the list, and we go back to the list, we actually are not retaining that state here. And it's not actually anything that we're doing wrong with the scrolling state. It's actually because of our launched effect here. So unfortunately, and our home screen goes away, uh, it gets removed from composition because we are actually navigating from the home screen to that character details screen. Uh, when we come back here, this launched effect runs again. And the issue with the fetch initial page at the moment is we are clearing out all of the data and then we are adding in that you know, most recent page that we just fetched here. So we're actually destroying a lot of the information that we have um, you know, on board in memory already. And that does cause the issue of we need to navigate up to the first page because we don't have any more of that content anymore. So we can just do something quite simply here. If fetch character pages is not empty, we can simply return at launch. So this just kind of safeguards us from like overwriting content that we already have. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world because now we have a very interesting line of code in a you know, rather simple sounding function, uh, but it does get the job done for now. If we scroll down a little bit and we click on Brad again and we go back, we see that we are retaining that state, you know, where they are, uh, the scroll state and all that kind of stuff. So this little line kind of helps us out there. We're not destroying content that we already have. As I mentioned, you know, when we added this piece into the view model, we are going to rework this architecture a little bit. It's going to become a little bit more advanced of a discussion. So I'm going to leave, um, you know, cleaning this kind of thing up for later um, when, when we get around to kind of uplifting the architecture even better than how it is right now. But hey, we have paging working. We can scroll the list. We can click on some different people here. I don't know why I clicked on that one. And um, we can just go ahead and navigate around. So if you made it this far in the video, smash that like button, subscribe if you are brand new. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.